You know, on that note, where we are at energetically is we are in a shift of consciousness, which means that our vibration, we really do want to start to radiate a higher frequency, a higher vibration and embracing the change. Gosh, it's been nothing but change. Welcome to the Let's Be Real podcast, genuine conversations for authentic living. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Lisa Allshafer, empowerment life coach and author. And I'm Sandra Pariser, health and wellness entrepreneur. And today's episode is Change Your Mindset, Change Your Life, where we're going to explore the role of mindset in embracing change and fostering a growth-oriented perspective. If you've ever heard the quote by Henry Ford, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right, because mindset, ha mindset has everything to do with your life and how you live it. It's how you perceive your life. It's how you perceive you and so forth. And one thing about this life is change is constant and you either embrace it or you resist it. And so part of today is understanding that change is here, whether we want it to be or not. Right, Sandra? Oh my gosh. We are <laughs> in the throes of lots of change and every single human on planet earth right now is feeling it. And it's getting, it's getting tight. It is. Yeah. And, and if you're not embracing change, especially with all the change that's going on in today's world, it's going to be like you're being whipped around on a roller coaster. It's, and it's you, going yeah, to and your, your anxiety is going to go through the roof. You're going to have mm -hmm. chest pain. You're going to be confused, disoriented. Uh, we're really getting into talking about, you know, embracing change. We're getting into a place now where, I don't want to say we're going to be forced into embracing it, but doesn't it kind of feel that way, Lisa? Like we're, we're really bumping up against embracing change. Yeah, we sure are. And it's like understanding what you have control over and what you don't have control over is going to make a huge difference, which is a whole nother podcast. But ultimately it's, uh, we can only control how we respond to all the changes that we don't have control over. Mm -hmm. And that's going to make the difference. So the more centered and grounded and growth oriented we are, the easier it will be. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It just means it's going to be easier than if you're resisting everything and letting it affect you instead of you having an impact on your environment around you. You know, and I, I think as we get into kind of some of the nuts and bolts of whether you're in a fixed mindset place or a growth mindset place, I think we need to um, talk a little bit more about the elephant in the room, Lisa, and just kind of embrace our, our audience. And we've all been through, you know, COVID and the division and the change, everything seemed to have changed when COVID hit. And, and so since then, you know, now we're in circa 2023 towards the tail end of 2023. Um, and we've been through wars and now we're, it looks like we're in another war. Um, and so as far as we have to be very careful when we are talking about embracing change, really starting to get curious about how we feel and what we're watching and understand that there is a difference between what's going on out there versus how we're processing it in here. And, and when we say embracing the change, it's more of just look at things from, you know, you have all the current events. I always tell people, my friends, you, anybody around me, because there has been so much change that really, if, if you find your play, your, yourself in a place of fear or anxiety or all those awesome emotions that um, I myself have felt, I'm sure Lisa, you have too. These are, these are normal emotions when all this change is actually violent and it's deadly and it is scary. So always focus on what you can control. What can you control? And, and Lisa, you just touched on that. What we can control is, are we okay? And Lisa, in some of the processes you've taken me through when you use your transformational coaching processes to um, understand emotions, like how are you feeling? That's the one question that you ask me every time and any, any one of your, um, your clients is that, you know, are you okay right now here in the moment? What does that mean? That means like, is somebody coming at you with a knife? Because if somebody's coming at you or you got, 
you got to react really quick. Okay, that's a whole other whole other ball game than viewing the outside world and what's happening and the change that's going on inside. Did right. I say that right? I feel like I got that a little garbled. Can you clean that up no. for me, Lisa? No, you're 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 good. It's uh, you know, we we all have this these different aspects parts of our brain, right? And when we go into fear, we are in the most primitive part of our brain. And so we can react and actually make things worse than they actually are, (laughs) which is why just checking in, is is there any external threat to you right now? And, you know, when, if I'm taking somebody through that process, there there isn't, (laughs) there never is, right? But, but your mind believes there is. And so then your body's going to go off into a reaction because your mind is perceiving that you are under threat, And now, obviously, in the world, there are people that are actually under threat. So if they're panicking and reacting, they're probably going to end up injuring themselves or getting killed or whatever. So even whether you are or whether you aren't, you still want to maintain a stability within and keep your wits about you so that you can move yourself out of the danger if it truly exists. Now, clearly, if it's your time, it's your time. (laughs) Again, you really don't have control over that, but we're talking about, you know, um, you know, mostly everyday things uh, for what we're dealing with today as far as our mindset goes. But yeah, the stronger you practice a uh, growth-oriented mindset in everyday life, when the shit hits the fan, so to speak, you're going to be much more prepared than if you've been living in fear every day. Makes sense, right? Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. So yeah, I I think it's worthy of you know, you and I want to bring to our audience real life, what is happening right now and how do we use our mindset? I think we should maybe just kind of cover awareness of, of what, what does that look like? So why don't you just share a little bit about your interpretation of mindset and how can we really play around with that in our own lives? Yeah. Well, you know, mindset is a pretty big buzzword these days. And so, um, you know, how I use mindsets a little different than what we're going to be talking about today, because there's so many ways to talk about mindset. But what we were going to focus on today is a concept uh, that a was developed by a psychologist, Carol Dweck. And what she created was a the concept of fixed mindset versus growth mindset. So if you think of it like it's on a spectrum, it's not usually we're all one or all the other. We're usually a combination and we can go in and out of both types of mindsets. So today we're going to, you know, talk about what those look like. And if you can identify that you're, we obviously want to go towards the growth mindset. Um, so if you know the difference, you know, we work, we, we learn really well through contrast. And so if we can know the difference between what a growth mindset looks like and a, and a fixed mindset, a little more in detail, that's going to help us define, you know, where we need to do some work basically. And, you know, in, in, in my business and the reason, um, I've become so successful doing what I do is, is, I don't know, mindset, right? Growth mindset. Mm -hmm. So, um, we call it failing forward and what does Mm -hmm. failing forward really mean? It, it takes into account all of the emotions behind the actual event. So way back when I started in my business, I was in my twenties, um, so this, this was early two thousands and, um, the 500 pound phone was, was a thing. And let's use that as just a simple example of, okay, so you're going to make a call to somebody to talk to somebody about something, maybe your business, uh, <laughs> but you have all of these preconceived thoughts in your mind about how someone is going to respond to you. Mm-hmm. The truth is you cannot ever say the the wrong thing to the right person. So how does one get from, oh my gosh, I can't pick up the phone to picking up the phone and doing it? There's a couple for me, at least, and this is a great example because how many people don't want to address a situation where they might fail, meaning they need to have a conversation with their significant other about maybe perhaps implementing a boundary um, where, you know, okay, I don't want things to go this way anymore because it's just not comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. And you're afraid, like you're afraid to have this conversation with your significant other because maybe they will have an emotional reaction to it and whatever that. And so, so you got this whole story that you're going to build up in your mind 
about how somebody else is going to interpret whatever it is that you want to either share with them or say, or a conversation or whatever it may be. And so you get yourself into a place where you, sh you're sure of the outcome. And so you talk yourself out of actually following through. And that's more of a, a, like a fixed mindset in, in that scenario mm -hmm. um, versus a growth mindset. Growing, it, we're either growing or we're dying. End of story. Emotionally, we are either, I mean, literally we're growing or we're dying. Mm -hmm. I have chosen to grow. Uh, Lisa, you've chosen to grow. I think if you're listening to this podcast, you're choosing to grow too. Mm -hmm. And so embrace the challenge of growth. It can be whatever you want it to be. So this is where you get to have a little bit of fun with yourself. Um, <laughs> meaning that if I have to do something where I'm not sure what the outcome would be, but it's an opportunity for me to grow because it's something I really don't want to do, but I know it's going to get me where I want to go. Um, now, now in circa 2023, I, I play around with my thoughts a lot. I go, okay, um, I'm not even going to anticipate what the outcome might be. I'm just going to pick up the phone and make a phone call and go and just do it and just get it done. And what's the worst that's going to happen? Because the procrastination is in this fixed and growth scenario. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yeah. So how you approach failure is definitely one of the signs of, you know, that shows up in that comparison, right? Either you recognize that failure is just part of success, which it absolutely is, right? There's the the commercial with uh, Michael Jordan. I missed 3,000 shots, 26 game winning shots and all this. And that's why I, I, I failed over and over again. And that's why I succeed. So anybody who, you know, like yourself, who has attained any level of success knows that the, the road is often paved with mistakes and failures. Um, and that's just how oh, it goes. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. Wow. Yeah. The, I used to say my husband, my husband's an anomaly, you know, you know, him, you love him. God bless Alan. Um, mm -hmm. He's just gotten far more no's than anybody else. Yeah. Go for the no. There's a book I think called go There's for the no, whole right? Whole book on go for the no's. Yeah. There's a whole sure. slew of books about failure, but, but it doesn't feel good. It still is uncomfortable. It still is going to bring up stuff for you. It's just recognizing, okay, that's okay. That's just emotion. I can still, like you did, I'm just going to make the phone call or I'm going to talk to the person or whatever it is, you know, that you were faced with in the moment. And, you know, often the, the apprehension about things is so much worse than the actual event. <laughs> yeah, 100%. And, you know, in this scenario, in this one scenario, it's, it's what we do to ourselves mm -hmm. that is so painful. Yeah. So if we can get more aware of what it is that's stopping us and get more curious about like, okay, why am I feeling this way right now? Why am I afraid to call so-and-so? Why am I yeah. afraid to have this conversation with my significant other? Yeah. Um, and, and try to understand, I mean, that's part of it too. Absolutely try and understand how you're feeling in any given moment. And in mm -hmm. an example, my gosh, um, you know, this, this last year of my life, that's been full of countless miracles. It is, I have embraced change to the point of whatever happens, I am willing to grow and however hard it is, I'm willing to grow. And when the growing pains come and Lisa, one of the, one of the biggest ones was what happened with my brother. Um, I'll just, tell the audience because it was just interesting how all this was happening. So in my childhood, uh, just again, it was a horror movie. Um, my brother, who's five years younger, who was raised, uh, he's my half brother, my dad and the wicked step monster. <laughs> That's what I refer to her as. And I will continue to refer to her as that forever. Um, so when my brother was eight years old, I was 13. I remember seeing all these bruises all over him. And he told me he's eight years old and I'm 13. And he says, um, you know, that, that Vince is beating him. And I went to my dad and my stepmom and I said, um, we got to get custody of him. Like they're hurting him. And my dad decided that it wasn't worth the money and the time to, um, to get custody of him, like awful. So fast forward, he spent 
basically his whole life in and out of juvenile hall, in and out of prison. He had a child when he was 16, named the child Damien. Um, we're, with that intent in mind, isn't that crazy? That's so crazy. So um, anyway, so as I'm declaring to universe, I'm going to heal completely. And I knew, I didn't really actually know what I was up for, but I knew I wanted to heal. And I had a lot of stuff with my dad, um, who's currently on the streets of LA as a homeless drug addict. So he made his decision. Um, I had, I, I got my timeline back. Like we were sharing with everybody last week. So I get my timeline back. Anyway, it was March of 2023 where I get a call from my sister early morning on a Sunday morning that she had my brother and my nephew up to her house with my nine-year-old niece. And my brother took a three foot, 10 pound sledgehammer to my nephew while he was asleep on the couch. So, um, in the process of this, this horrific situation, the synchronicities that were there in my, it was my healing journey. I'm healing through my dad. And then my brother shows up at my sister's home and commits this horrific act of violence in front of my niece, in front of my grandma, who's still alive. There's a lot to that story. All of the pieces in my healing journey came into this like pinnacle of a head. And I, I remember the, the first week and a half post drama, I'm internalizing this. I'm like, I know this is happening because nothing happens to us. Right happens for us. I, I believe I have that mindset mm -hmm. that things don't happen. I'm not a victim. Things don't happen to me. They happen for me. And how and what am I doing going through all of this? How am I going through all of this knowing that this is happening for me? Now, is that an easy mindset to have as you're going through such a horrific family experience? Like, no, it was um, really, really painful. And it kept unraveling over the summer. So here's my point in saying all this. Um, Miracle Monday happened on June 19th. There's a whole story in and of itself. But um, once I was able to get out of emotional pain, the physical pain happened. Then, then I got out of the physical pain and I haven't been in emotional pain since. So in my healing journey of embracing, I mean, Lisa, you could add more color to that in this scenario um, because you were just you were such a great source for me in, in really healing. It was a pretty wild thing. So what would you say, you know, cause everybody's got a lot of, we all have a lot of stuff going on right now. Yes, um, we do. But how would you connect that in from your perspective of watching me experience that? Well, you know, it's such a, um, I mean, truly there was an external threat in, in that experience um, with what your nephew was going through. Um, ultimately, he almost lost his life. He did, he did survive, right? Survive. Yeah. And now your half-brother is in uh, jail, prison, I believe, at this Just point. Just got right? convicted. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, you know, you have been working through a lot of trauma through your body mm -hmm. and... Uh, and that's something that is, again, a whole nother podcast, but ultimately, you know, when we, you know, our, our energy, whether it's emotional or physical, it's all connected. Mm -hmm. You know, why does it, well, you know, people say stress kills. Well, what is stress? It's, it's, it's emotion, how you're dealing with things and it taxes your nervous system and then your nervous system is connected to everything. So then everything that's connected to starts to become affected. And a lot of times, you know, we have different parts of our body that represent different emotional uh, energy that we're working through. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, you have been through an incredible amount of pain, um, in your hips and, in and, and, and I won't go My through all the physical details, body. <laughs> yeah. And, and you are a real trooper. I, you're like, I, 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 it may not feel like it to you, but my guess is you have a high threshold of pain. And if you don't, you really, you really, you, you do, um, manage it well. And so, but you've done a lot of healing work, both physically. I know you've seen some people on the physical level as well. Um, 
but ultimately that was a, that was, you've had a lot of family upheavals that have impacted you, right? From time to time, you know, and this was a big one. Um, but ultimately you have continued to ride through these tragedies really and come out on the other side much, much stronger. Yeah. And that's in that it is a mindset. It It, it is, it's kind of um, failing forward. I didn't know how painful failing forward was going to be over this last year of making a, you know, going in the journey of the self. Um, yeah. But it was in, in, and now I look at things. Um, I mean, I still remember the hundred pound phone, 500 pound phone. I still get that. I work with a lot of people. Um, a lot. Of what do you people. mean when you say that? What do you mean by that? Cause not everybody I, might be familiar with that. Oh, the 500 pound phone. phone? Yeah. Okay. So I'm in sales, um, in the health and wellness industry. And so when you have to pick the phone up and make a phone call, Hey, Lisa, I want to talk to you about this really great company. And then you, right. So sometimes that five, like, it feels like the phone is 500 pounds when the phones are like, you know, less than, I don't know, two ounces, maybe. Um, yeah. So that's, and, and that's, that's why I use that analogy. Oh my gosh, remember it yeah. actually used to be a much heavier phone than yes. things are today. Somebody uh, might, some people might have thought you're talking about the big block phones that first came out. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, okay, wait, that's yeah, what that's, I thought of at first. Yes, way, way back. So it's, yeah. um, yeah. So that's actually like a sales, um, just things I teach my team over time. That right. you really, there's nothing to be afraid of. What is somebody going to say? Like, really, what's the worst that somebody going to say? Yeah. And the worst has happened to me in my career, mm -hmm. um, but who cares? Right. I always tell people, you know what, you, you better get out there and change your life because nobody's paying your bills for you. Right. And so people can say whatever they want. You know, you, you have a big dream. Like my tagline on my email is dream big and dare to fail. Dream yeah. big. Oh, there you go. That's why you started with that one. Got it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dream big and dare to fail. That's why well, I started. With it. And that's because that's, you know, the more you dare to fail, the more you win. It's just how it works. And that's why, you know, when we approach things like that, it's, it's really important to keep that in mind. Does again, it doesn't mean it's easy. It just means that you are going to build your strength. I mean, you don't build your strength when things are easy. That's not when you become stronger. You know, you don't go to the gym and do a one pound weight and think you're going to be super strong. No, <laughs> sure. Yeah. You can get through it. It's easy, whatever, but you're not going to challenge yourself. And that's one of, that's the next one that's really akin to failure is how you approach challenges. How you handle challenges is another uh, example of how uh, fixed mindset and growth mindset really work together because they're very connected. Um, you know, a lot of times we don't want to, you know, uh, um, embarrass ourselves or, you know, we don't want to do something that might reflect poorly on our abilities or we might think it's not enough. That's more of that fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. And this is a lot of times where um, perfectionists can fall into that category because, yeah. and I, hey, I've been a... <laughs> a perfectionist for a long time. It's even falls in my Zodiac sign, but, <laughs> uh, but for Taurus, oh, right? Taurus or kind of, you're, an you know, overachiever. Like, you're just an overachiever. Yeah, overachiever, all that kind of stuff. And, and overachievers and perfectionists often go hand in hand. And so it's really about progress, not perfection. And to get out there and do this, uh, uh, whatever it is that, you know, um, you feel is not good enough, or you might be perceived as, um, you know, you, you don't, you know, you don't have the ability to do these things. And so you where know, let's, mm -hmm. let's touch, let's touch on ability. Like, how do you mm -hmm. feel about what you, what and who you are? Um, yeah. and, and, I think that that's really, let, let, let's talk about that. Cause that's how we feel about ourselves mm -hmm. and we can absolutely, you guys we're bumping up against change. There's just no way right. other than to go through it. Just like mm -hmm. with all, um, just like with anything in life, you know, you don't, you can't go around this one. You're going to mm -hmm. be, everybody's going through, we got to go through it. So how do we want to go through, uh, this huge transition on our planet of, self-awareness. 
again, there, there, there's, there's differences, but there's connections between all of these. And so if you look at how, you know, what you believe about your abilities in a fixed mindset, you believe that you, you know, you have a set intelligence, um, that your, your traits and, and, and there's very little that can change about them. Uh, so it's kind of like an old dog can't learn new tricks kind of philosophy in life. Um, but that's not true. But that, but um, that, that comes to, um, I absolutely love when you started going down the color code and personality types and, oh man, I mean, that's like embracing the parts of you that are not your strengths mm-hmm. and yeah. it, knowing your limitations and, mm-hmm. and how you feel about, you know, how do you feel about, um, you know, the things that scare you kind of coming back to this whole fail forward, what scares, right. you, what makes you uncomfortable? Yeah. Um, knowing what that is and understanding it on a different level. Yeah. Well, and I have a perfect example of this one because years ago, many years ago at this point there, I was uh, teaching a workshop and there was a 86 year old man who was taking the workshop. And, um, you know, I always, it's always very interactive and so forth. And he raised his hand cause he wanted to share something. And then I called on him and, and he said, Oh, never mind." And he kind of backed away. And then he said, um, oh, I don't, you know, I don't have anything to, to contribute or something along those lines. And of course, I'm like, okay, here we go, right? We're going in for that one. And um, so then I asked him what he, you know, where, where does that come from? And, and I helped him to kind of work through that. And what happened was when he was uh, a boy, now remember, this is an 86-year-old man. And when he was a boy, his, he had dyslexia and his father always told him he was stupid. And that he didn't have anything to contribute as far as conversation or whatnot. And so from the time he was a boy until he was 86 years old, sitting in my workshop, this is a belief, a fixed mindset that he had, a belief about himself and his abilities and what he had to offer. And it was, you know, it was uh, actually an incredible uh, moment for me too, to see where this man had gotten in his life. And he was uh, widowed and so forth. Well, he worked with me for a while um, in both of the workshop and the private client um, format. And he was taking dance classes and we started to, you know, remove that darn limiting belief about himself. Right. And he had a crush on his dance teacher. And, uh, um, and so he would, he would, it was, it was really awesome. And so he, you know, was talking about that and he, he would start to just open up more and more. You could see him just kind of blossom and really, he was just a beautiful man. And, uh, what ended up happening is he ended up marrying his dance teacher. Really? So it was, I love this story so much, uh, oh. because it truly, you know, goes into this whole fixed mindset versus growth mindset. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's our own limitations that we put on ourselves. It's really, I mean, yes, he, his father put the limitation on him, but at the same time, he took the limitation on himself and made it his own. (laughs) So the whole thing, growth mindset, yes, we are conditioned all over the place, but the growth mindset says, it doesn't matter what other people say about me. What matters is what I believe about my own abilities. So that's a pretty um, uh, good one right there. That's like the best story. When you take an 86 year old sitting in your workshop, Mm -hmm. how, it just goes to show you, you know, we are either growing or we're dying. And he was living, he was growing. And I wonder how the sensation inside of him just to, I'm going to take dance classes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The fear of doing that prior to that, like in figuring out what lifts us up again, kind of going into the growing or dying or, you know, embracing all of this change that we're currently facing right now. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the things that I, I mean, even going into this whole, this whole year of radical growth for me has been, this is really amazing and I'm going to have fun with this. And I, you know, that's a mindset. That's a, that's a, I'm going to embrace the change and, and, you know, I can sit here today and go, wow, I, I, the way I see things, I'm not really affected by what's happening in the world. Was I affected a year ago? Oh, Lisa. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Just riddled with anxiety. 
even really through, even through the summer, it's, it's so hard to, because people are dying and, and the lies are being told and we're all waking up and, and we are the change. We have to be the change that we see in the world. And now it's time for us to rise up and to heal our wounds. Every single one of us has wounds. Even if you've healed them all, have I healed them all? I don't know, but if they pop up, at least I, I know how to process them and I don't stuff them back down anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and really looking at, it's just, it's just looking at how we feel about anything. And if it's not, it's not from a place of love, that, that something comes through, then we can shift that and change that. Right. So if, if we have like, it's the, the rotating thoughts that we have in our head, everybody has rotating thoughts. We, we are all, we all have a mind and the mind is annoyingly loud. And one of the things that over time, really, since, you know, you've been with me through all of my growth, even in my business, you took me in my mindset of, I have a net worth my relationship with money. I have a net worth of a hundred thousand dollars a year and I'm never going to make any more than that. And I didn't know how deep that was, but you helped me clean that thought process up. So in the process of doing this over the years that you and I've been working together and been friends, I think it was probably 2015, 2016, where I started to actually teach in my business for people to follow their thoughts. What, what is your head telling you? You know, is it, I'm not worth it. I'm fat. I'm ugly. I'm what, you know, I mean, wow, we are our own worst enemies because mm -hmm. that's what we say to ourselves. So the biggest thing for our, our people, you guys, the best way to start with, you know, some of your limitations and whether or not you're in uh, you know, are you in a fixed mindset or a growth mindset is going to be uh, what are your, what's your head saying to you? What are your thoughts saying to you? And how fast you used to say catch and correct, right? Catch and correct. And now, even when I have been going through all this stuff over the last year, you, you say it so simply, it's the same thing with, um, when you called me out, when I was ready to just like quit everything on life. And, and you said to me, you work this out here, or you're, you'll work it out with the next either way. You've made a declaration to work it out. So or you're going to repeat it. That's another thing too, yeah. is that if we don't fix it, it's what we say, we will well, repeat and, it. And that's a perfect segue into the next one, which is how you handle criticism, right? Oh, yeah. Because, you know, that's, and that's the thing. Not going to lie. I think I handled criticism pretty good. Yeah. No, you do. And I've, I said <laughs> that, you know, in the last podcast yeah. is that you are very coachable if, if someone is resistant to feedback, it's just, it's just very hard to coach them because you're working through so much resistance. And when it comes to a fixed mindset, this is where, you know, uh, uh, well, first of all, you're, you're, you want to determine, is this constructive criticism or is it just negative criticism? Because there's a huge difference. If it's negative criticism, it's going to be handled differently than constructive criticism. So in this context, we're looking at constructive feedback, constructive criticism, and how someone yeah, might handle great, it. Great point. I think we, I let's tackle both those situations mm -hmm. because there is a huge difference and I think it's worthy of expanding on both scenarios. Yeah. Well, so let's start with constructive criticism because someone with a fixed mindset is going to show up in a few different ways. One of those ways could just be, I already know it all. <laughs> Those are always fun, <laughs> right? I know this already. I know it all. And the mind is closed. And, and there's a great saying, your mind is like a parachute. It works best when it's open. <laughs> so anyhow, that. so that's one, you know, one, one kind of category, but there's also defensiveness and feeling personally attacked. And that's more of that fixed mindset where you feel everything has become so personal and, and against you, right? It's happening to you, not for you, so to speak, is, is you know, like you, you know, your, uh, your motto in life. And, um, and so then it's very hard to even get things through that could be really beneficial. 
Whereas mm-hmm. someone who has a growth mindset in constructive criticism, okay, we'll stay with constructive criticism. It's like, doesn't mean it feels good, but yeah. you stay open. And, and um, you know, usually constructive cr- criticism is coming from somebody that you value or respect. Mm-hmm. And therefore it's like, ouch, that doesn't feel good. I can remember a time when I was um, in a coaching session for myself. This was so many years ago. And um, uh, he said to me, you know, uh, cause I had to, actually, I had a dream where I was really short in the dream and I was looking at the mirror and all the stuff was going on in the dream. I did a lot of dream analysis back then. And, um, he said, well, you know, you can be short sometimes. I'm like, what? I can be short. You've seen me short. I did like, he was like the last person I wanted to have any kind of, you know, uh, uh, feel that way about. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, and I had to take that, but it was, it surprised me actually. And, um, cause I'm a pretty patient person. Well, I've, that's grown tremendously over the years. <laughs> Wasn't always that way by any means, but, uh, but it certainly has grown over the years, but so yeah, impatience would come into that category. Um, but, uh, but ultimately if, when you have that growth mindset, you can, t- you, you take it, doesn't mean it's going to feel good necessarily, but sometimes it's like, oh my gosh, this, I'm so glad you, sh- you, you, you shared that with me. Cause I can't see it within myself. Mm-hmm. I didn't see that within myself. And if I can't see it within myself, how in the world am I going to change it? Right. Yes. So I'll let you do the other, the other kind. <laughs> well, I, on that note, all I kept thinking of is, is criticism, constructive or otherwise, yeah. uh, careful with your spouse on that one. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Deli- delivery is everything and intention behind the criticism. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you know, depending on the relationship that you're in with your significant other, um, the biggest lesson that I've learned o- over this last year with you and with my husband is there's never an intention for either of us to ever hurt each other. So now how do we hear each other? How do we really hear each other without our inner child, really my inner younger child getting her feelings hurt? It's been a process. So, um, yeah. So there's negative criticism and then there's positive criticism or constructive Constructive, criticism. I, I say it's positive because it's meant to, again, how do, how are we ever going to see like when you called me out and said, you're going to do it here or in the next, what you were saying is it's your work to do Sandra. And I was like, shit, man, you're right. Oh, right. okay. I got to work on myself, you know? Yeah. And it's, um, you know, you and I have a relationship now, uh, that I took that with so much love. You right. came at me with so much love. It was like, Oh, Sandra. Okay. Let's, let's go in. Let's, let's, let's see if we can get underneath it all. So So versus negative criticism, I will say this, you're probably your own worst enemy Mm -hmm. when it comes to negative criticism. That's almost a, I think that might be a hundred percent shot there. And I'm going to just kind of dive down this one a little bit deeper. So when you are following your thoughts and if you notice there's a bunch of negative jargon going on around and around you will have that present itself in your life coming at you from other people. Mm -hmm. So how do you, uh, how do you start to, you can either do it in one fail swoop and just have a a radical mindset shift or a download or, um, you know, a real, a real come to Jesus um, Mm -hmm. experience with yourself that I think will be more, um, I think we're going to get to that place sooner than later, just in our abilities right now to become a lot more self-aware. And this is what we're talking about. We're talking about self-awareness. So if, if you are following your thoughts and you've got negative criticism coming at you from you, it will come at you from other people. That's just a guarantee. Yeah. Cause how you treat yourself is how it's others how- will treat you. Yeah, exactly. And, and as you say, when you follow your thoughts, if you really, if you, Again, we are our worst enemies for the most part and and most hardest, you know, we have, uh, we're so hard on ourselves and so judgmental. And so if you talk to your friend, you know, like you talk to yourself, how long would they be your friend? 
Oof, da. Well, right. and on that note, when you start to heal yourself and become more conscious of your thoughts and then change them, you will have those relationships that are not serving you. They will naturally and organically fall away. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is another perfect example of what that looks like. I think through COVID, we all experienced so much loss, um, losing friends, losing family, lo losing relationships, getting in arguments and fights. And, you know, I'm right. You're wrong. Oh gosh. Anyway, no, mm -hmm. we're all here to, in my opinion, love each other, love one another. So, um, but remember when I was in that really awful relationship with Sarah. Yes. Oh, okay. So to a minimum. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry about, we'll see if we can, um, well, that would be kind of interesting if she's watching this podcast. Uh, but anyway, so I was in a relationship with one of my closest friends or I'd consider a closest friend at the time. This is way years before I even started dating my husband. And the relationship itself ended up taking on a new form to the point where it was, it really got to abusive. And, but I didn't understand, like I've never had, I've never broken up with a friend before. I have lifelong, immensely deep, wonderful relationships um, that I've had for a lifetime. So I had this relationship with this friend of mine and, and it was over the course of, um, I think it was when I was pregnant with, yeah, I was pregnant with my second daughter where, uh, she came up to visit us and it was like, all of a sudden, I don't know if it's cause I was pregnant and I could see, or if once you become a parent, you, well, and I was doing all the work too, Lisa. So this was all in that time frame, And, and so it just got to this point where it was like such a, okay, Sandra's cutting the cord. That relationship's over. And it was really, was she, was she critical of you? Is that where the, Oh, criticism. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, not only that, she didn't like my husband at all. Um, she, you know, Oh, you married him for the money kind of thing. And there mm -hmm. is just a lot of anger at mm -hmm. me from her. I ended up, she ended up going through a, a horrific breakup. I ended up falling in love and marrying my husband and jealousy, oh, the jealousy that came out of that relationship was, it was just, it was just toxic criticism. Oh yeah. All of the above in every which direction. And it was, it was a process of, um, you know, I was, I was going in a different direction. That's when I started to succeed, really succeed and start making a lot of money. And it was, and she fell away. The more I changed my relationship with money, the more it, it really was just, that was an isolated relationship where I, there were all sorts of lessons in it, all sorts of wonderful lessons in, in the relationship. And then once I shifted my relationship with money, it was, it was then it was over and it was done. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I think it's, you know, uh, again, you're, how you're sharing your experiences are perfect segues into some of the other, into the other, you know, characteristics, right? She was clearly in a fixed mindset and you were in a growth mindset. And there's just times where when people are negative and they're, um, you know, uh, critical and just like, but it's not with intent. And I would say, so the next one would be how she valued her self-worth. Oh, Cause yeah. that's the next one is, is how you value your self worth is going to determine if you're going to be in a state of comparison with other people when that's where now jealousy is going to come in. And she saw that you were creating a kind of life that she really wanted. Potentially. You know, and, on, and on that note, and I think it's absolutely worthy of saying this again, mm -hmm. she did not treat me the way she treated me to hurt me. It was not, mm -hmm. her intention was not to hurt me. Right. And I, and I knew that too, which just, mm -hmm. that's kind of next level thinking, but it's, you know, yeah. it, it's, but you're right. She, she had very little self-worth and, mm -hmm. and then she watched her friend get married and have kids and, 
have a life that, you know, create a, I created my life. I did create my life, um, intentionally and hers was just taking on a, um, a, a much more challenging, um, yeah. direction. Well, and I think too, you know, there's going to be people who are inspired by you and Alan and the success you've achieved. Right. And then there's going to be people who are jealous or are comparing themselves. And when you're talking about comparison, when it comes to our self-worth, it's recognizing it's all rooted in not good enough, <laughs> how you feel about yourself, unworthy, undeserving, uh, less than, all those types of things. And so when it comes to our self-worth, how we deal with that can be different. Some people can lay low and just kind of... <laughs> you know, never hit the limelight or want to be in the, in the, in the front. Um, and others are tr desperately trying to be better than other people. And mm. that's where a lot of that comparison, I have to be better than, and, and ne the need to be and better is, than, the need to be better place. than is rooted in less than feelings. Uh, why do you have to be better than? Why can't everybody be empowered? Why can't everybody, you know, share their gifts and share their success and celebrate it together instead of feeling like, you know, you're not as good as them. So now you got to either knock them down, which potentially maybe that's what she was doing. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, and again, a lot of the stuff we don't even intend on a conscious level to do, but on a subconscious level, oh yeah, it's all, you know, it's all coming out for, for play, so to speak. And mm -hmm. so, whereas someone, so that's more of that fixed mindset when it comes to self-worth, but on a growth mindset, that's where it's, uh, you are in, you're, you're inspired, um, you are into self-improvement. It, it, it doesn't you mean that you operate from the abundance mentality. Uh -huh. yes. Growth mindset is absolutely operating from an abundance mentality. And right. I have seen this in my business and you've seen it too. Um, that's a, that's all it. Think about how you really view others and it will be very clear to you really quickly. Are you in a fixed mindset or a growth mindset? And you will grow if you're in a growth mindset mm -hmm. and you will stay fixed if you're in a fixed mindset. And you will become stagnant and stuck and then resentful potentially because you see other people growing and you're not. Yeah. And that's why, you know, there's a... Um, a metaphor, it's an actual, it's an analogy, it's around the crabs and the crab tray. And so when there's a, a crab tray, which is traps crabs for, you know, for the mm -hmm. fishing, mm -hmm. you know, industry. And if a, there is a hole in the top of the crab tray, and if a crab tries to get out, the other crabs will pull it down and actually tear it apart and kill it because it's trying to get out. It's, I don't know why, I don't know the psychology of crabs, but that is a, that's often, you know, it's a, it's a used analogy for, um, you know, misery loves company. There's all sorts of little, you know, sayings misery about loves this. Company. And, misery and, loves company. <laughs> and so when, you know, if, if someone is operating at a higher vibration energetically, um, mm -hmm. and usually when someone is operating at a higher vibration, it's because they feel good about themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, but if they, are growing and this person that they're in a relationship with is not growing, then, mm -hmm. um, then either they can be inspired by this person and then start to move into more of a growth mindset mm -hmm. or, or, or they can start to try to pull this person down because misery loves company. Right. So now this person's at, choice. We're always at choice. Do I want to keep this person in my life or is it time for us to part ways? Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. And sometimes that parting ways can be more abrupt, uh, but sometimes it's just a gradual, like a leaf falling off a tree. And you know, and kind of on that away. note, where we are at energetically is we are in a shift of consciousness, which means that our vibration we really do want to start to radiate a higher frequency, a higher vibration and mm -hmm. embracing the change. Gosh, it's been nothing but change since COVID. I right. mean, radical, quick change. People have lost relationships. They've gone different directions. I am surprised at how many friends of mine have gone through divorces 
Mm-hmm. And, and so that's change. And you're right. It could be very quick. It could be very abrupt, or it could just be someone's leveling up. And the other person is also going to make a choice not to. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. think that, and so embracing change, right? Always try and stay in a state of, in a state of, you know, I operate from the best and highest good of all involved. Um, you and I do, Lisa. And, mm-hmm. and just in that one principle, I will operate from the highest and the best good of all involved. And as long as I keep that in my mind, you know, whether it's um, whatever's going on, all the change that's going on, Mm -hmm. if you need to stop and kind of evaluate how to respond to it, how am I going to respond to the, 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 the going through the change is sit with yourself for a few minutes and go, okay, what is for the highest and best good of all involved? Because I'm just going to take relationships right now because we're all in relationships. This is the relationships or the intensity um, in in supporting ourselves first, supporting others um, in in this big collective shift is is that it's okay for certain relationships to fall away and you're going to have to be okay with that. And and really just kind of trying to, you know, as your frequency is, is increasing, just, you know, give yourself grace. You've always told me that don't judge yourself, give yourself grace anytime in general to the point where now I'm here and it's, and it's, it's so much easier for me to just now, okay, how do I feel? (laughs) Like, what's the sensation? Am I feeling in my body? I mean, I've just done the work for so many years, but really this last year is where I've got it. Like Mm -hmm. I can really tweak and, you know, the anxiety, I think for me, as the world is changing in such rapid motion, um, the lack of control or the, the lack of control we feel, um, in the mindset of control, you know, we, we want to, I mean, we want to feel like we're in control of our environment. Um, but the fixed part of that would be, I'm going to hold on to it. The growth part of it would be like, okay, I got to just do what I can control. Yeah. Which is really adaptability, right? So adaptability is one of the, again, one of the signs uh, around, you know, to determine whether you're in a growth mindset or a fixed mindset, because if you're in a fixed mindset, as we said from the beginning, change is here and it's a constant. It's a constant in life. You can't stop change from happening and you're either, as you say, growing or dying. So you're either resisting change or or you're embracing change. And how you embrace change is learning how to be adaptable. And so when you're in a fixed mindset, you just want to keep things the way they have always been. You want the status quo. You want um, uh, to just keep things the same. And this is where uh, it's going to backfire because there's only forward (laughs) and a lot of people are trying to go backward or just again, stay the same or the way things used to be. How many times have you heard people say, I wish things were the way they used to be, right? Well, guess what? They're not going to be the way they used to be. They're going to be new and it's time to adapt. So somebody who's more from a growth mindset, they know this. This is something that is in their fully embodied in their belief system is that change is here and there isn't going to be going backward, right? It's going to be going forward and how can I best adapt? What can I control, right? And, and, and I can't control the change. I can only control how I adapt to it or if I'm going to resist it. Right. So that's huge. in in especially in today's world, I mean, even with the uh, COVID coming in that came in in 2020, I mean, that literally changed everything. Now there's all sorts of stuff around that, but we won't go into, <laughs> but anyhow, um, uh, yeah. but ultimately we needed to learn how to adapt in what was right for us. And a lot of what we were being told was not right for us. So now it's like, okay, well, I still need to exist in society on some level. So I'm going to adapt over here, but in my own private space, I'm going to do it the way I know that's right for me. And that's having a good, strong understanding of you knowing yourself and what's truly healthiest for you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's a lot, but do we want to 
we're in it to win it now. There's no yeah. shoving the genie back in the bottle. And in I just in the nature of of, of what I do, and um, we're in massive growth in our in our business, and it's really neat. I get to talk to people all day long, and I I love people. And I I was just on the phone with this lady today. Uh, she's 52 years old. She's from the Carolinas, and I, I've never met her before. But we're we're jumping on the phone and basically we're the same age right. and she's like she's like man it's just not the way it used to be and i'm like oh it's never we can't even that's a mindset shift folks like mm -hmm. we gotta if you if you catch yourself saying that boy don't i wish it was the way it used to be i grew up at a time that i mean i had fun i had a lot of fun things were so different um mm -hmm. and then technology came along and everything started just moving really fast. And so here we are. Um, what comes down the pike from here? I don't know, but we'll create it together as we go through this journey of let's be real because life is in full swing. And, I, and part of that is recognizing that it takes persistence. So when it comes to persistence, a fixed mindset, right, is going to lack persistence. It might feel like it gets to be too hard, right? It's just too hard. I don't want to continue to do this. And, and, uh, you know, it, it, and it becomes difficult. And like I said before, it's like, this is where we, we become stronger. So with a, with a, uh, a, a growth mindset, when it comes to persistence, they, they know that it's when, you know, when the rubber hits the road, this is where you need to stay true. Because when a lot of people make goals and when it starts to get too hard, they, bah, it's too hard and they give up on their goals, which means they never live the, you know, as you say, dream big, right? So they never really truly achieve what they want in their life become, because it's going, you're going to have obstacles. It's going to get difficult and persistence comes in when you no longer have the same feeling when you made the goal as you do when it gets difficult. That's where now it's persistence, right? That's where the rubber hits the road. And it's through persistence leads to consistency, which leads to momentum, which ultimately leads to success and whatever it is that your goals are. But when we are, I, I had an experience just, you know, not too long ago, I'm doing a, a, an exercise, um, uh, a 30 day forgiveness walk is what it's called. And I mean, it was so funny because it was day nine and I'm like, eh, you know, I kind of like to listen to something else. I'm listening to a whole Pono Pono prayer. It's only like 10 minutes. I do it on my walk in the morning and I do a quick little video afterwards. And in the video, it was just like, you know, yeah, I can, you know, it's, it's like, I'm kind of like ready to move on to something else. And then I said, but you know what? I might feel differently tomorrow. And, uh, you know, I don't know what's up ahead. And the next day is my, was my breakthrough day. It was my breakthrough day. It was like almost prophetic when I said it on day nine, because day 10 was my breakthrough day. So again, it's, but you got to go that next piece. And you it's have like that, that on the recording? The, on and the I have it on the recording. Yeah. It was like, wow, it was, it was a tra trajectory change in my life. And so, um, but there's a, a book called Three Feet from Gold by Napoleon Hill. And okay. the principle is, you know, you dig and you dig and you dig for the gold and then you quit three feet before you actually reach the gold. And sometimes it's that when it's the hardest is sometimes when you're on the precipice of that breakthrough. And that's where the persistence comes into play for people with a growth mindset. Amen. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Yeah. So we will leave you all with a little challenge to yourself. Well, actually, we got one more to go, and that is desire for learning, right? Oh. So um, a fixed, again, this is also where the know-it-alls can come into play. <laughs> <laughs> they know enough. So a fixed mindset when it comes to desire for learning is they know enough to get by or whatever, and they just aren't really into the self-improvement, just again, status quo. You can see how these things can all be linked together. Whereas someone with a growth mindset, obviously they're continually learning. 
And um, it's that um, uh, beginner's mind, right? Is the beginner's mind is that the cup is always empty. There's always more to learn and understand. And so um, now, you know, everything is at our fingertips. So if you're stuck in a problem, if you're, if you're, you know, you're going around and around, Google, chat GPT, whatever, because you're going to at least get some different information. And that information might lead you to somebody like a mentor or a coach or someone who can actually give you the feedback you need in order to break out of the pattern that you found yourself in of being stuck in whatever area that is. But it's not going to change, was the Einstein quote, you can't solve the problem with the same mind that created it. So you got to get new information in. And that's where the desire for learning comes in. So. Oh my gosh. If you saw my bookshelf, yeah. <laughs> I am a avid I'm an avid learner mm -hmm. trying to understand, you know, and, and we, we'll, it never stops. I'm so curious about so many things. I want to learn so many things, you know, and, and that's more to that point too, is what do you love to do? You know, ask yourself that question. What do you love to do? Just like our 80 something year old man, right. he wanted to learn to dance, learn to dance. If it, for me personally, astrology, I'm just fascinated by the science of it, mm -hmm. um, the math, the science of it, the, just the whole sacred geometry and, uh, you know, astrology. And it's just, uh, it's fascinating to me. And that's where I have chosen to go down my next rabbit hole of information and, mm -hmm. uh, study. So, yeah, I mean, you too, you and I both, that's the one thing that, um, my husband too, learners, learners, never ending learning and finding something that you love to do. And, and, you know, cause then it's not going to feel like you have to study something. It feels like you're going to, you're going to teach yourself something that yourself really enjoys. Um, like Stacy, me right now, my oldest daughter is learning volleyball and I played volleyball in high school. Guess what? I totally forgot all the rules and everything. So it's really fun to, you know, I'm, I got suckered into being a co coach or a coach helper or, um, whatever, I guess my, uh, my name would be. I'm just a mom that just wants to have fun with, you know, my daughter on a volleyball court and I'm learning something new. Um, anyway, that's, that's, that's a really, really mm -hmm. important bullet point. Because in the process of all the change, uh, to focus your energy on something you enjoy is a game changer. It is. Game changer. So 30 day walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's great. And you know, if, if, Y'all watching this right now want Lisa's little tips and tricks. <laughs> she might just put them in the description below. Um, but I, we were talking about that yesterday and it, it came in a download. I'm like, all right, so what's this 30 day forgiveness meditation about? Like, where'd you, where'd you get it from? And it was something she just created, but the epiphanies are happening along the way. Yeah, they sure are. They sure are. It was a, it's a very powerful exercise. Um, I've still have today was day 15. I've got 15 more days to go. And, <laughs> but so far, like it's been really powerful. So we are at day 15. Awesome. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, anything else you want to, well, I think it's just, you know, recognizing how to cultivate that growth mindset and just having, um, steps to do so. So st what we are doing today is about really becoming more self-aware if you are in a growth mindset or a fixed mindset by giving examples, giving stories of what that looks like, because self-awareness is the first step to true change for the better. And if we aren't aware of what's going on for ourselves, it's just going to, we're going to be on that automatic loop. So that's important. Um, one of the things that I created was a work, uh, like a worksheet for, for this that uh, you can find at lasvegaslifecoach.com forward slash mindset. We'll also have a link below, but for those who are just listening, that's where you can find it and you can download that for yourself. Um, and then 
some of the things to just put into practice is to embrace the challenges. Again, kind of like we talked about earlier is embrace these challenges. This is truly where you're going to get stronger. And, um, just like, again, it's so much of life is like being at the gym, right? You know, it's just, you got to lift the weights. You got to get through the challenges. You got to be persistent. You got to stay true to having a healthier body where you got to do the same thing for your mind and your emotions and, and all that as well. Um, and, and, uh, Sandra, if you want to take learning from failures, right? Yeah. Well, learning from failures, it's all about learning from, I don't, I, I don't even like the word failing because it doesn't, well, it never feels like failure anymore. Yeah, but it is a word and we got to embrace it because it's just how you perceive failure. If you right. perceive failure negatively, then you might not like the word, but if you can see the word is that everything is yin and yang. So failure yeah. is part of success and just reorient your relationship to the word just like we, you re changed yeah. your relationship with money, yeah. right? Yeah. So yep. that it's, it, it, it doesn't, you neutralize the energy that you have on the word. You neutralize. Yes. And, and I did actually, you know, it's not a 500 pound phone and phone anymore. Right. Uh, you know, I don't even think about it, but it consumed me in the beginning. Yeah. And then, yeah. So in the same thing with failure, like, it, it's all recent for me, but it is, it's a perception and a definition. You know, we get to change how we feel about anything, about anything. Yep. Yep. Um, and I'm choosing to embrace the change and enjoy it, even though it is really, um, it is hard. I'm not going to lie. This game of life right now is hard. Yep. And so I, that's what we want to you know, just, just little tips and tricks. And I think that that, uh, worksheet that you created, she's so good, Lisa, you're so good at these things. This is not my wheelhouse at all. That's my perfectionist buddy in you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it, the, the worksheet will be just a simple tool you can carry with you throughout the day in case you forget, you know, to follow your thoughts. Um, you know, have that worksheet on your desk, have it on your refrigerator, have it somewhere where you see it frequently. And that is, we really are coming to a place right now that we can easily move through these things so much faster. And because our awareness is shifting, everybody's awareness is, is we're leveling up, we're leveling up. So yep. to use something like that as a tool would be a really great start for everybody. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and try and stay in a place of gratitude. Gratitude is, you know, your, your 30 day forgiveness meditation um, forgiveness is, um, man, forgiveness is the name of the game. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's important to surround yourself with positivity, right? Mm -hmm. Positive people, again, mm -hmm. constructive feedback perhaps at times, but, but ultimately people who are more positively oriented, which goes along and akin to growth oriented Yep. and to have those people in your life. If you have a lot of negative Nellie's or Debbie Downers or whatever you want to call them, you know, you might want to just reevaluate. Is this a person who's lifting me up in my life or is this a someone who's bringing me down? And um, sometimes, you know, we don't have a choice because they're family. Uh, so if, yeah, you, we if, do. if yes, you're, we do. well, well, I, I, you, you can't choose your family. Can you, you can choose your friends. Um, not everyone is, you know, so, but then you just adjust to that adaptability. If you have somebody who's in your family or even a friend that you don't want to lose that friendship with, but you just accept them for the way they are and just continue to do your best to do the lifting. And perhaps that'll rub off on them <laughs> at some point in time. Um, but it is important to also just have positive people in your life as well. And the last thing is to cultivate your passion for learning. And that doesn't mean you got to go sit, you know, and listen to books for all hours of the day. Even if you just listened to an audio book for 15 minutes a day, it, you know, you can you pick up a it, piece of information it, and you'll, and it'll be absolutely what you need to hear for that day. And it's going to stick, which could be even actually more beneficial than listening to a whole book, because then you got too much going on, but yeah. that 15 minutes that you got was exactly what you needed. And you know what? This podcast counts. Absolutely. You this podcast absolutely. Counts. On that note, pay attention to what you're taking in right now. Turn the news off as best as you can 
and bring in stuff like this, podcasts mm-hmm. like this, little bits of learning over time, because we want to embrace you and lift you up. And, and that is something so simple. I can't tell you, I get lost in podcasts these days. I have the most, I'm following the most wonderful people and it's, and it is, it helps every time, mm-hmm. every time it lifts me up. So absolutely. Yes. Good. Great point. And even if you just re- take away one nugget from, from today, even just one little nugget, it's one nugget more than you had before you started <laughs> listening. Right. Yes. So yes. Although we hope we gave you a lot more than one. Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, um, we're an hour in so into this. How do we want to leave our beautiful audience today? Keep growing. Keep growing. Yay. And real talk, just- real talk for real growth. <laughs> That's right. So let's be real. Let's fill ourselves with nothing but positive, um, affirming growth uh, content and you will, it'll lift you up. Think about what you're putting in. So, all right. Thank you, Lisa. Looking forward to seeing y'all again next week on the Let's Be Real. We'll see you next time. All right. 